I'm Steve Phillips, Principal Scientist for APNI, and I served as the conference organizer for the AFCPA. Precision agriculture is often misrepresented as depending on high levels of technology. And here in Africa, that's a barrier that we have to deal with when we start talking to smallholder farmers in many different contextual situations within the African systems. Precision agriculture is not about technology. It's about identifying and understanding and managing spatial and temporal variability within our fields, which exists at critical levels sometimes for even the smallest of landholders. The technology just gives us tools to deal with this variability. But the real definition of precision agriculture is a holistic farm management strategy that accounts for spatial and temporal variability. Precision agriculture, we've been saying for several years, at some point we're going to drop the word precision. It's just going to become agriculture. And we have a tremendous opportunity here in Africa to learn from the trials and errors of other nations that have been doing this for decades. We started the African Conference on Precision Agriculture in 2020, right in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic. And so we were forced to do an online conference, but understanding some of the limitations of a fully online event led us to develop what we call the one conference, multiple location design. And so we actually had 14 mini conferences running in different countries across the continent. With the COVID restrictions, we were able to travel nationally, but there was no international travel. So we ran a single online main program that was broadcast out to 14 physically meeting groups across the continent. We did that out of necessity two years ago, but as we began to plan the 2022 edition of the AFCPA, we realized that there was value to that model beyond being forced to stay home. A lot of our stakeholders that we really want to reach with this conference have restrictions on their ability to travel to international conferences, whether it be funding or visa issues, immigration. And so we went with the multi-conference location. We had a main physical conference here in Nairobi, which we then live streamed to 10 other countries where they were meeting in groups of uh, 35 to 140 people at each location. And so we're able to deliver the main program content from the live speakers here in Nairobi. And in addition, when we take breaks here, they listen to live presenters from that country where the satellite sites are. So in all, we end up with 140 in-person live oral presentations where we only have 40 on the main program. There's another 100 that registrants to the conference can have access to. The mission that we're trying to accomplish is to put precision agriculture in action for Africa. We didn't design the AFCPA to be an academic conference solely, and we're not a commercially focused trade conference either. We want to be a hybrid model. And so we bring in content from academia. We listen to scientists, we listen to service providers, we listen to input suppliers, we listen to crop consultants, and we hear from farmers themselves on the main program of the conference. And so what we're trying to do with AFCPA is create an event that brings together all of the stakeholders necessary to develop a sustainable, growing precision agriculture ecosystem within the varying context of agriculture within the African continent. And so to do that, we use a combination of international speakers. We've developed this in partnership with the International Society of Precision Agriculture. And so we've put ourselves on a two-year rotation with the European Conference of Agriculture, the Asian Conference of Agriculture, the Latin American Conference of Agriculture, and as of two years ago, now there's an African Conference of Agriculture. 
And so with it, with, by joining that network, we have opened up Africa to the international community who previously, having been a member of the International Society for over 10 years, we have sorely lacked African engagement in that society. And so through this partnership with the International Society, we're now making contacts with our African scientists who otherwise wouldn't have had access to some of the content that's out there through journal subscriptions, etc., personal uh, contacts, opportunities for funding, for research, travel grants for them to attend some international conferences. And we also make the international community aware of the good work that's going on in Africa that often goes overlooked because of some of our limitations in uh, getting our work out to the rest of the community. Whenever we try to do a conference that we're live streaming to 10 other locations where we're running 11 conferences simultaneously across four time zones, there's a lot of possible problems that can arise. And so I'm very happy that we have a great IT team working with us from PAQ Interactive and our communications team here at APNI that we came through this relatively unscathed this year. And so going forward, we just keep getting a little more creative and a little more inventive in the ways that we can connect people for this conference. And so I think this year was better than it was two years ago, and we're already thinking of ways to improve it for the next one in 2024.